He stiffened. There were cries, and among them, to his horror, he could distinguish the harsh voices of orcs. Then suddenly, the deep-throated call a great horn blew, and the blasts of it smote the hills and echoed in the hollows, rising in a mighty shout above the roaring of the falls. That was Aragorn's understanding of the situation from far off as he stood near Amonhen. The ranger knew that orcs were near at hand, and time was growing short for his friends. But meanwhile, in our alternative story here, Oromir defended his hobbit friends valiantly. So great stood the man of Gondor that the hobbits might have seen as to them a vision of a man of westerness, holding back the hordes of the Dark Lord in ages past. In this moment, Boromir thought of everything that drove him. The glory of Gondor, his great father the Lord Denethor who ruled from the Tower of Ecthelion, his brother the Captain Faramir, and now his newfound love for this fellowship that he was a part of. For Gondor! Boromir cried as Uruk and Orc fell to his blade. He held long enough, and in this version of the story, Boromir had yet the shield he carried this whole way, and with it he held fast the arrows of the Urukai that were being shot towards him. Boromir would hold long enough for his companions Aragorn and then Legolas and Gimli to find him and Merry and Pippin, and together those six remaining members of the Fellowship would yet survive together and make for a retreat towards the stair that would bring them safely from the top of the Rauros to the bottom, where the Entwash met Anduin. Now Ugluk's force was strong and would keep after the Fellowship, but here, if the Fellowship was together and was able to fight off enough of the Urukai, they would be able to evade them for now, making their way down the path towards Gondor. If Boromir would have survived that situation, he would not have let the halflings get captured either, and the remainder of the Fellowship would have fled the situation, but not by boat. Surely that would have taken too long to cross the water, and Strider would have noticed at this point that one of the boats was missing, so if they went across Nen Hithowell, they would have led the orcs and Urukai right to the Ringbearer. Now in this situation, the group would survive and Boromir would have confessed to his deeds concerning Frodo and him, as he already partially did when the group scattered after hearing that he had grown angry with Frodo when Boromir was trying to convince him to go to Minas Tirith. Aragorn, in wisdom, would say that the decision of what was to come of the company was made for them, and that Boromir redeemed himself by saving Merry and Pippin. Now they as a group should go where they were most needed, and since Boromir's path from the beginning led from Rivendell back to Minas Tirith, his home, he would not forsake that road now. Boromir and the company would begin to head to Gondor together, where the Hammer of Mordor would fall the hardest, and where they might do the most good. Since Merry and Pippin had not been captured, the three hunters would not be formed as a group, nor would they all go into Rohan. But in the book, there is an eagle that watched the company around this time at Gandalf the White's behest, as some of the characters noticed the eagle far away. Thus, Gandalf's plan would need changing, but I believe that rather than meeting the three hunters in Fangorn, Gandalf would fly to them upon Gwaihir, and after meeting with the remainder of the Fellowship near Anduin as they headed towards Gondor, he would convince Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas to meet him at Edoras, while he would put the hobbits in Fangorn to stir the Ents. In such a way, I think Gandalf's plan in the events of the Two Towers would still come to fruition, just as he had orchestrated the plan in the book, for if the Six went all to Gondor right away, Rohan would have fallen surely. Now again, Boromir's path was towards his people and Gondor, with or without the Ring. At this point, the Ring was far away, and he would have known its perils, after having almost taken it from Frodo. He no longer would have wanted the Ring, nor would his friends let him go after it. And as his friends went with Gandalf to Rohan, Boromir would continue onwards towards Gondor. While Boromir as a character loved his neighbors in Rohan, he knew that he was most needed in the White City and it would be so. Boromir would continue on and come to the Ramus Ekor, the outermost walls of Minas Tirith, and he would be escorted by Ingold, who welcomed the High Warden of the White Tower back to his home. Word would spread of Boromir's return, and Faramir would say as much to the hobbits when he saw them in Athelion. Boromir would be reunited with Denethor once again, and since both of his sons yet lived, the madness of Denethor would be stayed although he would undoubtedly be upset that Boromir had not taken the One Ring for Gondor. But after having heard the horn sounds of his son days before, I think Denethor would just be happy to see Boromir alive, 
thinking that he may have come to some harm. In such a scenario, the defense of Gondor would be far better than in the original canon timeline. Whilst in the north and west, Theoden was roused from his hall, and the Ents went to war, all by the devising of Gandalf the White, in Gondor, Oromir, the leader of men, would take charge and mount a suitable defense of the city of the men of Numenor. He would also be doing this while preparing Gondor for the return of its king, a man Boromir had come to admire. Denethor would be somewhat aware of this, for as a steward of the House of Anarion and a descendant of Numenor himself, Denethor was far-sighted, as told in the book. So Denethor would be aware of his son's actions concerning the coming of this king. Again, though, the madness of Denethor would be staved off, and I think if Boromir was the one preparing Denethor for the return of a king to the throne, rather than Gandalf as it is in the canon, Denethor would have taken to the idea better. Now, even as the Battle of Helm's Deep was won, Isengard was drowned, and Gandalf and Pippin would make for Menas Tirith, I believe that Boromir's leadership and the hope that he gave his own people, including his father, would have made quite the difference. Furthermore, the armies of Gondor would be more ready for the attack, as Boromir had quite the mind for military strategy. Thus, when Gandalf and Pippin arrived, I think the defense of Gondor would have been well underway, much to the pleasure of Mithrandir. Faramir and his men would return to the city and Gandalf would save them from the grasp of a Nazgul, as he does in the book. With Boromir's wisdom and counsel, Faramir would not be sent back to retake the Causeway forts, for Boromir would have seen the peril that would come to his brother if he left the White City once more, and I do not believe Denethor would have felt the madness to send his son away. And so, when the Siege of Gondor came and the armies of the Witch King made ready to break the gates of Gondor and burn the city, the preparations and leadership of not only Boromir, but Faramir also would have made quite a difference. Now the host of Mordor was strong, and would have still come into the city with fire, but I think it would have taken them longer, for the soldiers of Gondor would have been better prepared for the battle by Boromir, and they would have held fast with his leadership. Then of course, the riders of Rohan would come to Gondor's aid, and Imrahil and his swan knights would ride out from the city to meet them, as Boromir rallied the men of Gondor within the city. Denethor would not burn, and since both his sons yet lived, he held out hope. Now, since Faramir was yet well and there was no pyre, Gandalf was free to take on the Witch King upon the Pelennor, meaning that Theoden also would not perish, nor would Eowyn take her wound or marry his. Aragorn and his forces would come up the Anduin and to the Keys of Harland, and the forces of Mordor would be routed as they were pushed out of the city and field. The West would have had a greater victory during this battle if Boromir had survived, for his actions would have been a catalyst against the deaths of both Denethor and Theoden, the saving of Faramir and Eowyn from their wounds, and the defenses of the city would have been better prepared. Aragorn would still set up his tent outside the walls of Minas Tirith as to not usurp Denethor or create political unrest, but he would still sneak into the city and heal many of those in the Houses of Healing. A great debate would be called, and the riders of Theoden and Imrahil, many of the men of Gondor, and others including Boromir, Faramir, Eowyn, Merry, and Pippin, would join the host of the West in going to the Black Gate to allow Frodo and Sam a chance to destroy the Ring. And since there weren't as many casualties in the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, there would be more troops in this march. Denethor would remain as a steward in the city until such a time when the king might return, and if he should, the people of Gondor, not the least among them Imrahil, Faramir, and Boromir himself, would all make Denethor surrender power to the king. During this venture towards the Black Gate, I think Eowyn, who yet sought death in battle, would behold the Numenorean nature of Faramir, of whose temperance was more like to Aragorn in some ways than Boromir, and she would still fall in love with this captain of Athelion. The Battle of the Black Gate would be fought and won, as Frodo and Sam destroyed the Ring, and celebrations would be held on the fields of Cormallan. Boromir would reunite and honor his friends, using the opportunity to apologize to Frodo for his actions at Amon Hen, seeing now that what he attempted to do was folly. Frodo, of course, would accept this apology, having himself taken the ring for his own in the final hour of doom, and knowing all too well the evil powers of that thing. After some time of rest and celebration, the Fellowship of the Ring, which was all reunited, would together return to Menas Tirith with the Host of the West and Aragorn would have so much support that Denethor would have no other choice but to give up power. Just as Aragorn does with Faramir in the book, he would restore the stewards to as they were during the reign of the kings of Gondor, and Denethor would retain the stewardship, 
coming to respect and even love his new king. The people of Gondor would have happiness during the rest of that age and the beginning of the next, as Aragorn ruled with Denethor, and then Boromir, and then Boromir's descendants as his stewards, for King Elisar would grow to be very old. But he would see the family of his friend Boromir continue on, just as the lineage of kings did as well. Eowyn and Prince Faramir of Athelion would live in Emin Arnon and Gondor, and Theoden would rule for the rest of his days in Rohan, until Eomir's time came. Thus, if Boromir had survived, the West itself would have benefited much from him during the War of the Ring and afterwards, for he would have spent the rest of his life trying to do good for his people and his kingdom. From this theory of what if Boromir survived, I think that just as Boromir himself could have gone on to repent for his mistakes and do a lot of good in the world, so too can everyone. Yes, we may stumble and make mistakes, but it is truly about our actions after those mistakes that count. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. I hope you all also enjoyed today's updated theory on what if Boromir survived, and I thank you all so much for watching. I'm so glad to come back and make this theory better, for I now disagree with much of what I said in the original theory video years ago, and I believe that this updated version is much better and a truer version of what would have happened. There are some other old videos of mine that I want to fix in a similar way. If you enjoyed this, please hit that like button and share this with a friend. What do you all think? If Boromir survived, would the story have happened like this or some other way? The beauty about theories is there's so much to wonder about, and so much that could be different. Please let me know what you think. And also, please check out our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, Merch, and Patreon for a podcast and Discord server. Links are in the description below. We just did podcasts discussing all three Lord of the Rings movies this summer, so if you're interested, please check out our Patreon. I also wanted to shout out our Valor tier patrons, Adrian De La Tour, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Kyle Wetzel, Lane Grimes, Samuel McBee, Jonathan Putnam, and Mark Kralik. Thank you guys so much, it means a lot to me. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with an epic character history on Prince Imrahil of Dol Amroth. Everyone, as always, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.